Okay, it's still not recording. It's still recording. Okay, now it's recording. Um, the button is on. So we can uh, begin. We stopped where we were discussing about faith and how there are great things that people have accomplished through faith. We've also seen that uh, not just these people, but uh, there are so many other people, right? Men of God, women of God. We've seen their lives and how they have uh, lived for God. I think in the last uh, class, I talked about William Carey, right? The man who, uh, the father of modern missions who came uh, here to India and he translated the Bible in many local languages. He translated it into Sanskrit uh, initially and then into so many other local languages engaged in social reforms. How is it possible for people to do all these things? Uh, some of these things look great. Uh, and we wonder, wow, how can people accomplish all this? But it's because they are walking by faith. They are walking in faith. Now, we may even look at, let's say, a mother and uh, a mother raising her children. Okay. Now, maybe she is not... Uh, you can't compare her with the kind of you know greatness that we say somebody accomplished out there but it's a faith journey also to be able to raise uh, up um, you know children with values and good character and um, uh, they are equipped uh, in whatever education skills to raise up children who are responsible in the community that's not a joke but it takes faith uh, it's not really about what is the accomplishment some accomplishments look very great, but some may not look very great. But what is the common thing that all of us need? Faith. Okay. So I mentioned uh, mother because the name of Susanna Wesley is coming to my mind. Susanna Wesley is the mother of John Wesley, the, the Methodist movement. And she had many children. So her life story is also incredible. You find that uh, she was so busy just raising children, you know, uh, cleaning them, cooking for them, uh, helping, just taking care of them while they grew up. Uh, it is said that she never even had time. No time, because when you have, you know, children, so many children, you have to take care of them. But she never used to miss her prayer time. You know how she used to pray? She used to take a cloth and put it on her head because there is no private place. Everywhere there's noise, everywhere there's chaos because kids are there in the house. But she would cover her head to make a quiet place for herself and make sure that she has prayed to God, right, every day. So look at the kind of commitment. So when there is somebody who has an example like this, no wonder her sons, you know, uh, both John and I forget the name of his brother, but they both together were the, uh, the leaders of the holiness movement that began, uh, uh, you know, right after, um, like uh, we talk about different stages of, of church and the uh, different things that happen, right? The movement of sanctification. So John Wesley and his brother, they were involved uh, in that particular period of time and they made a huge impact on Christian history. So uh, everything takes faith. Even if there's a mother who's raising up children, it's going to take faith. Okay, so whatever God calls us to do, we need faith in God. And that is the only way that we will be able to do what he wants us to do. So we've seen the stories of all these wonderful people. Now, what are some lessons that we can learn from this passage? One is that those who walk by faith, they obtained a good testimony before God. So what it simply means is, see, when God looks at us, he knows who we are, right? We don't have, we cannot cheat God. People may, um, people may deceive other people, but we cannot deceive God. We cannot, in other words, a better word is, uh, you know, deceive rather than cheat. So God knows who we are. Now, how can God be happy in knowing uh, who we are? It's when we are people of faith that he is, you know, accepting of us or um, pleased with us, okay? Uh, and so our um, reputation before God really matters. Who does God 
see me as of course we are in christ jesus you know my identity in christ is secure all that is true but that identity is true for everybody all believers but how would how do i live in that identity okay and how do i continue in faith in that identity so when i'm walking by faith my reputation before god right god is pleased with my life because i'm walking by faith all these people why were their names included in uh, hebrews 11 because god was happy with them were they perfect actually no we'll see later even abraham he was not perfect he doubted god he made mistakes right so he was not perfect but still he tried okay he tried the best that he could to have faith in god and that's the reminder for us our testimony before god matters god is happy when we are walking by faith okay uh, so we need to keep journeying that way even though we may look at our own selves and say that hey i'm not yet good at this or uh, i'm i'm i really need to develop myself in certain areas all that's fine but don't stop living by faith when we live by faith we obtain a good testimony before god now most of us we may worry about our reputation before people we we think what will <coughs> excuse me what will people say what will people think about me do they think that i'm a good person or not well it does matter you know our testimony before people it does matter okay uh, but then what matters most is who god knows us to be whether we are people of faith so when we are people of faith and god can see that it's so pleasing to god just like all these people so god is not pleased with them only because of their achievements no they were people of faith some of them had very small things i already said able one thing he did why is god so happy with him man of faith faith is what god is looking for do you trust me can you walk with me can you journey with me can you put your faith in the promises of god that's the question god asks all of us and when we say yes lord i'll walk with you till i see your promises fulfilled in my life in my ministry god is pleased with us okay so remember that having a good testimony with god how to have a good testimony with god how to make god happy be people of faith okay that is how we do it what else do we see in this passage we see that there were people who lived um in faith today to obtain the promises of tomorrow uh, there is a passage given here the section from um, 13 verses 13 through 16 and uh, verse 10 as well so i'll do one thing i'll go into this i forgot there is a question here which we missed um taking so deepu you have your hand up is there a question you wanted to ask or is that by mistake Uh, yeah sorry ma'am by mistake yes yes sister please go ahead uh you're on mute no no by by mistake i oh, raised my mistake. hand by mistake okay sure yeah. all right yeah no problem thank you uh so we'll go back to this uh, passage where uh, in hebrews 11 and verse 10 it says for he waited for the city which has foundations whose builder and maker is god it's talking about abraham then from verse 13 these all died in faith not having received the promises but having seen them afar off were assured of them embraced them and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth for those who say such things declare plainly that they seek a homeland and truly if they had called to mind 
that country from which they had come out they would have had opportunity to return but now they desire a better that is a heavenly country therefore god is not ashamed to be called their god for he has prepared a city for them all right so what do we see here abraham talking about abraham it says that he waited for the city which has foundations whose builder and maker is god so abraham he is moving towards the promised land isn't it because the promise of god is that okay abraham you know you will have descendants i will give you this piece of land you can read from genesis chapter 12 you can start reading what god promised abraham so there was a there was a piece of land that god promised him so he was expecting that god will give him that however the truth is that you know there are other scriptures that tell us that even though um the literal promise was a piece of land and a son and descendants there is a spiritual significance in these matters so abraham you know he may not have understood all the scriptures you know have so much revelation at that time there was no bible isn't it it was put together much later so abraham is living in his relationship with god he is hearing from god that's how he is he has developed his understanding the revelation that he carries but with that uh, revelation that he has at that time he knows that god is speaking of more than a piece of land more than just you know that whole israel that god wants to give abraham god is actually talking about a spiritual inheritance god is talking about so if you look at the bible uh you you would see that even in the future what is god going to do he's going to establish a city the celestial city who is which is god's city so how will abraham back in his days have the understanding about all these matters cannot right because he may not have been given the bible but with his little knowledge whatever he knew he was faithful that is what god expects not that we know everything right yes it's important to try to know everything but even before we have a lot of revelation what are we doing with the revelation that we have we may have little revelation but you act on that revelation obey what god is asking us to do that is what god expects from us so with the little understanding that abraham had he kept moving he knew yes god will give me a city god will give my people a city and even a spiritual understanding the bible says that it was only because jesus then came into the picture he did the work of redemption but all that somewhere in abraham's understanding he knew that god will redeem god will restore you know uh, his people and these wonderful things will take place so you notice that abraham lived his life in the present but he had his eyes on the future way into the future isn't it so he never even knew about you know how jesus would come how he would maybe in his spiritual understanding little bit something god would have revealed to him little bits and pieces here and there but he may never have had clarity but what do we learn from you know abraham and people of god whatever they knew they walked by faith they lived in the present with their eyes on the future so even today we carry the promises of god we carry um, you know so many uh, sort of so many uh, instructions of god the vision of god in our hearts so we can live our lives today but at the same time we can have faith in what god is going to do tomorrow now this tomorrow may be in our lifetime it may be beyond our lifetime do you all understand because there are things in the kingdom of god that god wants to do in the city in the nation in the world and god can give us visions 
of these matters in our lifetime but that doesn't mean that it will happen in my lifetime it may happen way beyond my lifetime but we should learn to live today with our eyes on the future that is what faith is all about so we can have faith in god for all these things which are yet to come so look at the language which is used in verse 13 about these people it says um they saw the promises they were convinced of the promises and embraced the promises confessed in line with the promises so there are four words which are used to describe their faith what are these four words one is saw so what is saw if you see something into the future what does it say we have faith in our hearts because now faith is the substance of things hoped for isn't it so it's in the future but when they lived their lives they saw into the future because of their faith okay so that is one thing that they did they had their eyes on what god was about to do uh even in the days to come second what is the word convinced convinced is like believed assured convinced i'm convinced that it is not going to rain today i'm sure so they were convinced they were very sure that god would do what he is telling us to do or rather what he told us that he would do then they embraced the promises embraced means that you fully receive it okay embrace is like you just take a hold of the promises you don't let it go they embrace the promises and how did they exercise their faith confessed the promises so they must have confessed the promise like you can imagine you know abraham talking to isaac when isaac is a little boy and telling isaac isaac do you know god is going to give us a city god is going to make us a nation a strong nation god is going to uh, you know our descendants will spread across the world what is abraham doing confession faith if you have faith say to this mountain so how do you operate uh, in faith we need to speak we need to confess and that is what you see them doing first they had the vision they saw they were convinced they embraced and they confessed okay so that is how they actually walked in faith during their times uh and they obtained a good testimony in verse 39 uh, it also says that did not receive the promise okay so obviously when abraham was trusting god for a heavenly city a heavenly kingdom it did not happen in abraham's lifetime he died and it has still not happened because it is in the future in god's timeline so you see a life of faith does not only mean okay i'm getting this from god i'm getting that from god yes there are a lot of promises that we will walk in today or in our lifetime because god has promised it but there are many things which will come later so even if we don't see it like abraham the heavenly city the heavenly kingdom he has not seen it he's still a man of faith so even in our lives there are some things that we will walk in but there are some things which are left to the future but we can still have a good testimony and you also notice that there were some people who went through a lot of persecution uh, in that same passage in the beginning you see they subdued kingdoms they uh, you know they uh, um, what worked righteousness they shut the mouth of lions it sounds amazing wow people did great things by faith but when you go down and you start to read some of the other words here it says they were stoned they were sawn in two they were tempted they were slain with the sword uh, they wandered about in sheep skins and goat skins being destitute afflicted tormented that doesn't sound very good so that is talking about the sufferings that people went through right the sufferings that people went through why is that mentioned in hebrews 11 in hebrews 
we should only read about great things but it also talks about the sufferings that some people have gone through for the sake of our faith right the reason is that even enduring for the gospel enduring for the things of god in a difficult time it takes faith without faith it's so hard to actually live through that season of affliction oppression or um, uh, persecution okay now we are not saying go looking for it but if it happens if it happens in the midst of those circumstances it is god and faith in god which will help us um, carry on and come out so that is another lesson that we read here so now let's just look at two examples um from this particular passage one is about the children of israel you know how they journeyed and they looked for a better land if they really needed eyes of faith in order to get that promised land i think many of us know how um you know moses sent spies do you remember that moses sent spies uh, to go and uh, search out the promised land they come back and they give him information there are 12 spies and in the 12 uh, two of them say it's a land flowing with milk and honey but 10 of them come back and they say there are giants in the land meaning it's very difficult to occupy this land but it was a thing of faith that the people of god actually went and occupied it isn't it because uh, if they if let's say moses had gone by the report of the spies who said that it's too difficult uh, or they also said things like when we see the giants we are like grasshoppers in their sight so all this kind this kind of an attitude really showed that the people did not have faith in god so it's it's like saying when we look at a problem we feel that the problem is too big that and that we are very small that's how they behaved the israelites they looked at the promised land and they said there are giants and we are like grasshoppers we can't do anything we can't enter yeah god said you'll enter but how to enter there is a problem but what did uh, what did caleb and joshua say they said we can do it we can you know take over the land and who finally entered the promised land who finally entered yeah joshua caleb they were the people who led the others into the promised land what does this tell us about having faith it's only when we have faith that we will walk into the promises of god if we don't have faith forget it right we need eyes of faith that tell us that what god is saying is possible because what does faith reveal to us that the god we serve is the god of the impossible the god we serve is the god of miracles isn't it so then your faith will show you that whatever god wants you to do through your life it can be done we can do it so we need understanding about two matters to carry this kind of faith one is know who god is if we think god is oh god, god can't do it how can god do it when our understanding of god is weak then our faith will be weak second know yourself if our understanding of who we are in christ is weak again we won't be able to have faith in god so these two things matter know that we serve a great god and the fact that we now uh, are in christ and all these things are possible so this this story of the israelites taking over the promised land is a reminder for us that we need to carry faith if we don't have faith then what happens uh like the israelites we will struggle 
okay so it is said that it is just about 11 days journey from egypt to the promised land land of canaan how many days about 11 days okay how long did they take 40 years 40 years right so why did they take so long to travel any idea it's easy about 11 days just go no it's right around the corner exactly the book of hebrews reminds us that in hebrews 3:19 it says so we see that they could not enter in because of unbelief it's so unfortunate some place that they could have possessed in 11 days 40 years what's happening they are circling in the wilderness going round and round and round in the wilderness not able to enter is it god's fault no it's not god's fault god wants to give them the promised land that's why he's saying go go occupy but what is stopping what is stopping these thousands of people unbelief they're not able to trust god they're not able to believe god they're not able to believe in the promises of god so till this generation with a hard heart and unbelief uh, you know was sort of past god said you know what people with unbelief i'm not even going to let them enter the promised land let the new generation enter it because god does not like unbelief okay so the problem was unbelief that kept them out of their promised land today what will keep you and me out of our promised land unbelief faith faith or unbelief unbelief will keep us out what will help us move in faith right so these are all lessons for us to learn uh, god wants us to occupy god wants us to have god wants us to be blessed you know according to his promises of course but it's only faith which will move us in that directions so don't give place for unbelief now um another thing that is told about the children of israel is their disobedience one is doubt unbelief that kept them out second is disobedience hebrews chapter 4 and verse 6 it says since therefore it remains that some must enter it and those to whom it was first preached did not enter because of disobedience so notice two things are stopping us from walking in the fullness that god has for us one unbelief second disobedience so we need to get rid of these attitudes uh from you know our hearts and our lives then it becomes easier for us to step into what god wants us to do uh and let's now quickly look at the example of david you know there was a mention of uh david right in that list uh, david's accomplishments so what is so special about david so there are so many wonderful things uh that we can learn from the life of david we especially can go back to the time when uh david killed goliath okay so we know that uh, goliath was a giant and he came and threatened the armies of god and at that time there was not one person from the armies of god who had the courage to go against the giant right but we read the story that um david said that he will take down the giant how did this happen david was just doing his normal work his father had told him go and give lunch to your brothers so he went there and then he started hearing the um uh, uh, the taunts or the words of the giant and he was so angry he was like why are people even tolerating this this giant you know we should just take him down and why is it that david was able to do it because david had a strong relationship with god okay uh, we see david as a worshipper we see him as a psalmist 
we see him as somebody who spent a lot of time with god so what happened to david you know the way he looked at god the way he looked at life completely changed so at a time when the whole nation is distressed by an enemy they don't know what to do about this goliath david easily he says okay i'll just take down this giant and you know when we study about the life of david they say that at that point he must have been just about 17 years old can you imagine many of you here bible college first year 17 so you should be able to kill goliath okay because david killed goliath uh, so don't say oh ma'am i'm just 17 it's okay david was 17 and he killed the giant so in the same way for us today we have um, giants uh, in our lives it's not goliath it can be something else it can be depression it can be anxiety it can be you know maybe some something that i want to do but it's not happening it could be some um, habits my own habits that i'm trying to overcome my own attitudes that i'm trying to manage these are all giants these are all goliaths in our lives but what did david do by faith just with a slingshot he took down the giant okay so it was not so much the slingshot but it was the faith of david in a great god so today you and i like david if we want to overcome our giants what do we need faith right faith by faith you can take down any giant who stands against god so uh, david is another wonderful example you know you can talk so much about the life of david and uh, you know how he uh, acted boldly uh, at at a time like this and not just now but david i told you he was a worshipper right he was a psalmist he was a shepherd boy uh, but also the bible uh, attributes greatness to him as a warrior so what a life what an example one man Uh, he's a, he was a king okay all this but he had incredible faith in god so that is a beautiful testimony that david carried as a man of god and uh, it just kind of reminds us that we too must journey with god in the same way so let me just pause a little bit um we were talking about people in the old testament who had faith in god so if there's any more questions or uh, some discussion points uh, please bring it up so that we can we can talk about it for a little bit yes yes akil aha uh -huh. uh are you are you asking are you saying asking okay uh, so in this era we as christians hmm okay okay so akil is saying though we as uh, christians we've heard the gospel and we know so much of god's uh, word uh, it feels like it is uh, maybe the unbelievers or you know non christians who uh, seem to have faith in god right faith in god more faith in god okay they believe they believe easier okay uh i don't know i mean i won't be able to comment uh, uh hmm yeah hmm. yeah so they are they are more open they are, you find that they are open and they they are willing to come uh, to church listen to sermons and all of that all that's fine akil but um, what i'm thinking of is when we say faith no faith is more than uh, just showing up 
for you know christian activity or uh, being open to listen uh, regarding god yes all that is a starting point but real faith is a a journey in relationship with god so that i don't think uh, non christians uh, have because obviously we we call them unbelievers because they don't yet believe uh, in god right so yes there are instances where they seem to be so very open um, and that's good that's sort of the the opening from where we can talk more about god now coming to believers uh, you are right we know so much from god's word uh imagine abraham if he was in bible college what will happen to abraham i mean he's already he's already the father of faith with the revelation that he had back in those days but if he had the kind of revelation which we have or we believers we are on the other side of the cross okay and uh, we have the blessings of the new covenant which jesus made with blood so what we are living in right now is very great that not even abraham david uh, you know talk about the other names uh, samson samuel they all desired but they never saw we are sitting on it now okay uh, but why is it that we may not seem to have the kind of faith which uh, the other people had the same issues unbelief disobedience all these things are hindering us in our walk with god and we they're not letting us respond um, you know in faith so yeah just my two cents to your comment uh, anything else if anyone wants to say you can share i'm looking at the chat here okay so there are no related comments to akhil's uh, point but there's something else on the chat here where uh, brother sanjay is saying the egyptians were led by pharaoh a leader filled with pride or arrogance and this brought about his downfall without humility or surrendering our will to god we cannot have faith in him also from scripture we know that moses was a humble man who feared the lord okay yeah thank you for that insight uh, brother sanjay he's comparing humility and pride so when you look at both the leaders at that time moses is the leader of the israelites and uh, pharaoh is the leader of the egyptians but pharaoh was full of pride and what did we say um you know god resists the proud and he gives grace to the humble so moses compared to pharaoh he was a man of humility so no wonder god helped moses and the people now coming to uh, the question here vicky uh, he says oh vicky is online today fine <laughs> so i was thinking where is vicky but vicky is online nice faith of god um, can do everything possible but what about our self faith is self faith different from faith in god and how um so when you say self faith uh wiki i think what you mean is like when we believe in ourselves right confidence so sometimes that's how it's described confidence in who we are so uh confidence in our own identity is also faith as long as it is biblical for example identity in christ i am forgiven so today if i worship freely without any weight of shame or guilt or anything in my life i feel like yes i made mistakes but you know i have repented before god i have uh, made changes in my life god accepts me in christ jesus what is that i have faith that i am forgiven i'm confident right about my own identity that is like self faith what you're talking about but it is based in scripture wiki and that is fine that is fine as long as you believe things about yourself that the word of god says it's fine to have that kind of faith but it is when we believe things about ourselves which is not in the bible that there is a problem okay i hope i have answered your question wiki
yeah and of course you know um self faith if if we we talked about it earlier you know if you just come up with strange things um then those things may actually not happen even if we believe it confess it and you know do all those uh, things okay so anything else any other comments about the people in the old testament or some lessons from their lives hmm ah hmm hmm okay uh, so um aman is asking like enoch right enoch only few things are mentioned in the bible but what to do if i want to learn more things about enoch so see the the best way aman is uh, to go by what the bible says and only god knows right why he has mentioned little bit about somebody and more about another person okay so you take what the bible says then there will be some uh, historical records historical records is outside scripture but you know going with the information of historical records is little tricky because we don't know no which is correct which is not correct so that is why i am saying um in order to do research like that to find out additional information beyond scripture about any individuals we have to be very careful so maybe for people like abraham you will have lot of information which you can confirm because there are many scriptures in the bible okay and abraham is mentioned in many books in the bible but somebody like enoch it is a little bit uh, tricky so don't try to uh, get into it is what i will say at least not right now um you receive whatever is available as of now maybe after a couple of years when you are little more strong in your uh, you know skills of researching the word of god then you want to look at some extra biblical reports you will be able to verify or discern whether it is accurate or not okay otherwise what happens i'll tell you why i'm saying this because we read online this book that book youtube video full it will become one khichdi in your head right and then you'll come and say ma'am you know enoch did this you know i'll be like where is it aman it's not in the bible no no in youtube they said but what he is saying on youtube how do you know it's correct right so there's a lot of confusion that takes place uh, which we can avoid uh, if there is a source of literature which we cannot verify don't even read it you got my point we have to be very careful when we are interpreting the bible okay don't get your um, your um, your basics your foundations don't get it messed up be very clear about the core concepts in god's word okay did i answer okay so only if god is saying only so much you say thank you jesus amen we have you with that for now okay next um okay uh, shekhar uh, amrutwar is asking is it good to read book of enoch yeah yes brother so i know there's a book of enoch which has caused a lot of confusion in the body of christ so people believe in different um, philosophies that have come in because of this book now that's what i was trying to tell everyone that we can't verify people say it's historical but how do we know how can we verify so it's better not to get into these things yeah thank you okay seems like there are no more questions oh there's a question uh hana also have faith or she just asked god because of the enemies so from the life of hana uh okay bless is asking this question we we know that she had faith that is why she asked god if she didn't have faith and how would she um you know reach out to god you know she would have just become depressed or done something else but her faith was that god will give so she prayed and she got a got a son okay so fine blessy that is the answer esther clement 
can you give us some idea on when uh, will we be having the assignments and exams? Okay, so uh, I am uh, to post your uh, exam, your first assignment, Esther. Uh, today is the 12th, so just give me time uh, this week. I'll have it posted. Uh, I usually give a week or more uh, for you to complete your assignment, so you'll have enough time uh, before the deadline to complete it. Okay, so this week you can expect your assignment to be posted. Your first assignment, and then the second assignment will be posted a little later. Okay, anything else? Any other questions? Okay, so all these great people did great things by faith. You can do your assignments by faith, okay? I really hope so. <laughs> After learning so much about faith, you should be able to do it. Um, so let's just close with a word of prayer. And I leave it open for someone from the online audience to pray today. Please pray and we'll close. Can I pray, sister? Yes, yes, please go ahead. Gracious, loving, heavenly Father, God, thank you for your grace and mercy, Lord, that we have today, Lord, meditated on the heroes of faith, oh, Lord God. Lord, in a very special way, Lord, you have visited us through the life of the heroes of faith. And Father God, as we, Lord, imbibe these, uh, Lord God, the importance of faith, oh, Lord God, all through our life, oh, Father God, Lord, bless each individual richly, Lord God, help us to be as people of faith and Lord God, glorify your matchless and mighty name in all our things we do. Lord God, let it bring honor to your name and Lord, help us to, Lord God, believe for the supernatural, Lord, attempt great things for your glory, oh Father God. Thank you for Sister Nancy, Lord, and the passion and the love which is Lord teaching us, oh Lord God, bless her abundantly and her ministry. Father God, I bless all the students and online and offline, Lord. Thank you for the Lord, the eagerness and the Lord, the thirst and the hunger they have for the word, oh Lord God. Thank you for the rich uh, Lord food which you are giving us through these uh, sessions, oh Father God. We give you all the glory, honor, and praise, and we dedicate this day, Lord, into your mighty hands, Lord. We pray this prayer in the most precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Thank you, sister. And thank you, everyone. God bless you. Have a blessed day. Uh, we'll meet in another course tomorrow. So see you then.